For those of you meeting me for the first time, my name is Ekene Onu and I am a feminine leadership coach. I am the founder of the Iconic Womanhood Community. Uh, we run masterminds, retreats, and we have a premium, valuable, amazing course called the Iconic Womanhood Course. Now, having gotten that out of the way, I want to share with you something that I fail to meet my goals. Yes, I fail to meet my goals today. Yeah, I'd love to tell you all about it. So many people around this time of the year are busy thinking about their goals that they set at the beginning of the year. And they're thinking about all the things they had written down that they would get done. And, you know, when they get to the end of the year, a lot of people, and trust me, I'm in the coaching business. I've talked to so many people. A lot of people do not meet all their goals. And a little known fact is a lot of the gurus, experts, all of the people that people look up to also don't meet their goals. They just don't talk about it. Today, I did some content batch shooting. So we batch shoot uh, videos for, we have some new content things that we're doing next year. Uh, so we were doing some videos, we were doing some photos, all for next year. So we, you know, the, today was our batch content creation day. And I had this incredible list. My team and I, we had a meeting and we put together, we had an administration videos, administrative videos, we had marketing videos and we had content. We had this massive list of things that we needed to do. Uh, I was gonna be shooting for a few hours. I've been shooting from the morning all the way to, I just got back home, which is why, listen, I'm in my, I wanted something soft to wear. I'm in my head, my, you know, my little turban. I'm not, you know, I'm not in the mood. And before I washed up my makeup, I said I'd come on live and share. Let me tell you, I did not meet my goals. No. We got through probably half or maybe, maybe three quarters. No, half, about a half or of the goals that we set. So I had all these videos that we were going to shoot probably about half of them. And when uh, my video guy came in, uh, he said to me, he said, I bet you have about, you know, you want to do like 30, 40 videos or something crazy, right? I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, how did you know? Because I always have these audacious goals. And he's like, okay, we're just going to give it our best shot. We're going to give it our best shot. And we did. We didn't meet our goals though, but we gave it our best shot. So the, before I tell you the problem with goal setting, let me tell you the value of goal setting. I didn't hit my goals today and I'm going to be really transparent with you guys, something a lot of people don't talk about because around this time people are often posting their wins. They're posting, you know, how great the year was. The year, my year was really great. To be very honest, from a business perspective, we did well. We have seen consistent tremendous growth in our business. I was talking with my bankers uh, this week and it was such a great positive conversation about how well we have been doing. However, at the beginning of the year, I set some audacious goals, much like I did today. <laughs> Very audacious. Um, and uh, I didn't meet those audacious goals. But because those goals were so audacious, even if I got to half of it, which we got to more than half of the goals, it would have been really good. Right. So the benefit of setting goals is this, just like today, we set some goals. I set some goals at the beginning of the year. We map out an action plan based on said goals and we begin to take action by faith. And that's what we did today. I had a plan to create content. You know, makeup artists came. I had hair. I had the whole drama all the racks of clothes. I had the people around to photographer, videographer, you know, you put everything in play, but we couldn't get through all of it. But what we did get was amazing. It was really good content. We had a good time. It was very valuable. Just like this year, a lot of people don't share when they don't hit all their goals. And so you're sitting down thinking, 
you're the only one that didn't hit all your goals. Guess what? A lot of people didn't hit all their goals in all the areas. So maybe you had goals you know, in your professional area or in your personal area, or if you're a student, uh, your your course goals, right? But you didn't hit all your goals in all the areas. That's common. Hello, that's very common. We just live in a world that likes to act as if it's not. People don't share that part. They only share when they have the wins or they only share, you know, it's always very targeted shares. And that's okay because we're all trying to put our best foot forward. But you need to read between the lines and recognize you're not the only one that is not hitting your goals and recognize this very key thing. This is the problem I have with goal setting. So many people use their goals the wrong way. Your goals are meant to be a guide to success. They are not meant to be a form of bondage. Some people use their goals as a way, they're so rigid about the way they approach their goals. And, and, and it's not your fault because that's the way we're taught, right? And you begin to use your goals. If you hit them, you use them as a way to validate yourself. And if you don't hit them, you use them as a way to make yourself less and to accuse yourself and to condemn yourself. Your goals are not to meant, meant to be a form of condemnation. They're meant to be a guide to where you're meant to go. They're, they're just, okay, this is what I want. This is my dream. Okay, I'm going to translate my dream. So what I do when we do goal setting in the Iconic Women and Community, we always start with vision and then intention. So what is it you see? And your goals are a product of that. They're a product of your intention, your desires. They're a product of that. Okay, so based on this life that I want, I'm gonna set these goals in order to get me there. What you are not going to be able to do is control two very critical things. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, time and chance happeneth to them all, to us all. Time and chance happens to all of us. You don't always know. You don't always know. How, who could have predicted in 2019 COVID, right? And so the goals that a lot of people set had to be adjusted. They had to be adjusted because the world changed. Maybe your family dynamic changed. Maybe your health changed. Maybe your desires changed. So you couldn't set the original, you couldn't meet the original goals. Here's another thing that goals don't do. Goals don't show you the whole picture. So if you said, I didn't hit my goals and you're upset with yourself, you're beating yourself up, you're looking only through the lens of one measure of success. So I've had so many conversations this last couple of weeks, really. And so many of us were high achievers. And this is the thing about high achievers. You set really high standards for yourself and you hold yourself to high standards. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, high standards are meant to be a guide. Nothing in this life should put you in a place of bondage. Nothing in this life should make you feel so devastated. It's all at the end of the day, honestly, I work hard to make my business successful. I work hard to be an incredible coach. But at the end of the day, no one is going to say, oh, wow, when I pass away, no one is going to turn around and say, I know, and her business was making this much money, or she was the most fashionable, or they're not gonna say any of those things, right? So if that's what you're holding, put, you know, hanging your hat on, what people will talk about is the relationships you had, how you made people feel, how you cared for people, how you showed love. That's what they're going to talk about. How you inspired them. That's what they're going to talk about. How you made them feel. And so your goals should guide you towards that quality of life. If you use your goals, and this is why I say that's the problem with goals. Your goals are meant to be a guide, not a way to put yourself in bondage. If your goals become so overarching that you don't even live your life, because there's some people that hit their goals. They sure did hit their goals. And you know, I've hit my goals before too. Like I've hit financial goals, I've hit other kinds of goals, right? If you hit your goals in such a way that you are losing life, 
then what's the value of that? Let me share another example. Recently, I have lost a little weight. Yes, I have been working on it. Do y'all see these cheekbones showing up? Have you seen the video where I posted my, my stomach is getting some lines? If you don't see it, it's your problem. I see it. Where, where recently I've been I've been working at this for a few months. It wasn't very quick. I haven't lost, I'm still on my journey. It was a very slow incremental process. And thank you, Erica. I appreciate the claps. Okay. <laughs> it was a slow incremental process. I've lost weight before, and I'm not knocking anyone who's done this, by the way, but this was, I was a little younger, and I remember how rigid I was at the time. I lost, like, the first time I lost weight, lost, like, maybe almost 80 pounds, like, very, like, in months, and I was rigid. I would work out sometimes twice a day. I was eating mostly greens, right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Eating just like, and I was so particular. And I, the number one thing, and, I, and my daughter was saying it the other day that she says, Mom, I remember those days. You always used to say, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. I can't eat that. That was like my thing. I was so like hardcore. And granted, I did lose a lot of weight. And, and I felt good in my body. But... When I started gaining weight back, I was like, oh, I don't want to do that, but I want to be healthy and I don't want to live like that. I felt like I, lo I couldn't live, right? I could not live. And um, I, was, I was always hold, like, holding myself back. And so, of course, when I decided that, you know what, I can't have to live now, you start, the weight starts creeping back on. So this time around, at the beginning of uh, last year, no, beginning of this year, what am I saying? Yeah. Beginning of this year, I had to, dis I made a decision to start taking better care of myself because in 2019 with COVID, I had a lot of personal stuff, 2018 as well. I kind of just focused on my business, on my clients, on my family, on just people around me, making sure everybody was okay. I had some major stuff going on in my life. I was overwhelmed emotionally, but I just didn't have the bandwidth. And I was taking care of everybody. So I was taking care. I got into therapy, but I wasn't taking my, my body. I was like, listen, y'all going to get these curves. Yes, I'm juicy. And that's the end of it. But at the beginning of the year, I, my knees, you know, I got, I'm older now. I wanted to take better care of myself. And I wanted to physically, not just emotionally, but physically. So I did something. I said, I don't want to do a diet. I'm not interested, I like, and God bless you if you do any of those. There are a thousand and one diets, You're keto, whole 30, like there are a thousand and one things. I said, I want to find a way to, to meet my goals, but to live at the same time. And so I decided to create a sustainable, <laughs> I wanted sustainable goals. I had done it before where <laughs> overnight, and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Because one, I'm too old for the drama. I'm getting older. I want something that I can live with. I want to be able to eat bread because I'm going to have some bread. I wanted to be able to have a glass of wine when I feel like, like I'm going to have tonight. I wanted to do the exercises that I loved. I didn't want to feel tied, right? And so I realized that, number one, here's another problem with goal setting. We tend to, like, like I did today, I created goals that were just unrealistic. And even if I had been able to do that, I can guarantee you every single person in, on my team would have hated me by the end of it. Have you ever been a leader on a team that you drive your team so hard, the next year they all quit? That's a, you, you hit one goal, but you created another problem. For me, I didn't want to approach my health changes that way. And so I decided to do a few things. Another thing that people don't do when they get create their goals is they often don't think about how much support they need to bring the goal to fruition, right? So I said, I, I you know, I've done this before. I know how to 
white knuckle and lose weight. I don't want to do that. So I want to work with, I want to get help. So I got my friend, my, she's a, she's a, a client and a friend, and now I'm her client, Agatha Chindu. She's a wonderful wellness coach. She has an amazing program coming up. She didn't ask me to do this, but you should totally check her out. And um, I signed up with her to work with her to help me understand my relationship with food, to help me understand what food would be good for my body, right? And to help me set realistic, holistic, sustainable goals. So we were talking specifically about food and how food impacts my body. And she's an integrative nutritionist. And so that's why I wanted to work with her to really have an understanding about food. I also hired a trainer, which I haven't seen, I actually haven't worked with Agatha professionally in a few months, but what she taught me, I still use. And I haven't worked with um, my trainer. I hired a trainer professionally in a few months either, but what he taught me, I still use. So I had hired a trainer to help me do some strength training, right? And to begin to change my body. But, um, I, and I was so glad I did that because that support, a lot of times we set these goals and we just think, I'm just gonna push and drive hard. Like I've talked to business owners who set goals like this year, I'm going to be a six figure business owner, seven figure business owner. And even they go get these amazing strategies from people, right? But the strategies don't take into account the team that you're going to need. Cause you, you're going to need a team. You need a team on, you know, business perhaps you know as far as professionally but you also need a team of people you need community you need support to get through that you know we don't talk about the reality of trying to get amazing goals off the ground the internal like stress that it places on us i just want you to think about this i want you to just visualize this you know take put this in your mind when you set big goals this is where the goal is. This is where you are, right? I want you to imagine like you're a plane on the runway. And the plane, your goals are on this elevation, right? This altitude. And the plane is here. And a plane is going on the runway. Have you ever, how many of you have been in a plane? And it's about to take off, right? And it's, it has to pick up speed. It has to pick up speed. Then it, when you're in the plane, and that, that's when you hear the sound, the pressure. Because it's trying to rise, it's trying to get to a certain altitude. There's a tremendous amount of pressure. The same thing for us. When we are trying to shift from where we are to where we want to be, there's a tremendous amount of pressure. Tremendous. So we have to think critically about all that we need in order to accomplish that. Because, hey, it's awesome to set big goals. I'm, I'm, I'm team no more playing small. Absolutely. I'm 100% on that. But I also know the reality is you need to be strategic. You need to be realistic. And at the end of the day, when you are doing your analysis of your year, like you might be doing a year in review and you're looking back at the year, be measured as you go through it okay, maybe you thought you were going to hit this number and you didn't. All you need to do is first of all, understand that you are not your goals. You are not your results. Even if you hit them, don't let it make your head. Don't go around, as we say in Nigeria, carrying shoulder. Don't go around thinking I'm bigger and I'm better than everybody else. No, you hit your goals. Awesome. But that's all that happened. You hit your goals. At the end of the day, it's not your goals that are going to get you to heaven. At the end of the day, it's not your goals. Your, let me tell you who will humble you real quick. Your children. If you have small children, they don't care that you hit your goals. They want to know, mom, you know, what are we having for dinner? At the end of the day, they don't care about all that stuff. What really matters, you have to get really clear on what really matters. So if you didn't hit your goals, don't use it as a reason to beat yourself up. If you hit your goals, don't use it as a reason to puff yourself up. Both, in both cases, you should be doing the same thing, analyzing. Okay, I hit my goals in this area, awesome. What did I do right? 
What do I need to make sure I do next year? How can I rinse and repeat this? Or how can I amplify this success? What is my next step? Awesome. If you had a fail, understand a fail is only a stepping stone to a win. So if you had a fail, you didn't hit your goals, awesome. Okay, let me take a look at this. You know, in both places, start with gratitude. Let me take a look at this. Okay, what, did I, what, what was missing? What didn't happen? What did I need to do differently? What factors did I not take into account? What do I need to look at? What, is there something I'm missing? Is there some awareness I need? Let me look at this thing critically, not from a place of I failed. You didn't fail. You attempted something and you didn't get the results you expected. That's all. So why didn't you get the results you expected? Look at life more like an experiment. Oh, okay, let me see. Hmm. Okay, that's disappointing, it's true. You will feel disappointed. Move past it. That's disappointing. I wish I had a different outcome, but that's not the outcome I have. Okay, what can I learn from the outcome I do have? What can I learn from the outcome I do have? And the other thing is that so many people feel so... There's such a quest for perfection. And there's such a comparison culture right now. Like you're looking at other people and using them to judge yourself. And you're just, and you want to be perfect. You're not called to be perfect. No one is asking you to be perfect. And in this quest for perfection, so many of us are missing what really matters. I hope that today you can come back. Like I came back, I literally, I was, we, I have been up since 5 a.m. this morning. Last night we were organizing, you know, all the looks for the shoot. I got up since 5 a.m. this morning, did my mom stuff, got to the shoot location. We have been shooting all day. It cost me money. It cost me time. Would I have liked to have accomplished all the videos and all the content and all the photos on my list? I would have loved to. Was it an audacious goal? It was. I knew it. Do I feel grateful right now? Absolutely. I feel grateful that we were able to do what we did. I know that we're going to use that content and it's going to be amazing. I feel like I'm blessed. No matter what you look at, no matter what your goals say, when you look at them, whether you got to your goals or you didn't get to your goals, I pray that you can look at your goals, your year in review and say, I am blessed. I am blessed and highly favored because every day above ground is a good day. Some people are not even here. I heard the other day a really tragic story, uh, a young woman who's a luminary, uh, she's doing great work and she lost her husband quite suddenly. They're in their 40s, in their 40s. Oh, he was in his 40s. I was just rocked to my core. Can you just imagine that? And you hear this over and over again. We don't have time to beat ourselves up because you didn't meet your goals. Put those things, you know, like review it, reflect, analyze, and then put it away and focus on what's happening today, which is you're alive, you're well, you know, by the grace of God, you have family around you. If you don't have family, you have friends around you. If you don't have friends, go make some friends. You can get up. You have the sun is shining. You know, you have a roof over your head. You can get on Instagram. You have some data, some internet. You have a lot to be thankful for. Don't waste any time beating yourself up because you didn't meet any goals. Goals are there to be a guide. That's what they're there for. Goals, you set goals so that you can have a, a, you know, a direction that you're moving in so that you can get clear on the action that you need to take so that you can apply faith to your goals. They are not meant to be another way to put yourself in bondage. You should, you're not supposed to be enslaved to your goals. They are meant to be a guide. They are not meant to own you. You are meant to own your goals. And so no matter the outcome that you have had this year, as you look back, whether you hit your goals or you didn't, don't let those goals define you because you are not defined by your goals. You are defined by your God. Can somebody say that again? I am not defined by my goals. I am defined by my God. 
That's what matters the most. You are a child of God. You are blessed simply because you're a child of God. You are valuable simply because you're a child of God. I have goals because I'm a child of God. It is not my goals that are my God. And so it's important to put goals in their place. They have value, but they are not the value. So whether you hit your goals or not, you are not v va more valuable because you hit your goals. You are not devalued. All you need to do is sit and reflect and say, I didn't hit my goals. Okay. What is it I need to do differently? What can I learn from this experience? How do I need to move forward? Where are my goals realistic? Do I need to adjust them? Where are they sustainable? Where, do I have the capacity? Where are they a not now situation? Do the, do the work of reflecting and asking the questions. Do the work of reflecting. And if you hit your goals, don't stop reflecting because sometimes people hit their goals and they change on the inside. Have you seen people, you know when the scripture says, I desire that you prosper even as your soul prospers. It's very clearly saying that because there's a kind of prosperity you can have where your soul is not prospering. And if your soul is not prospering, your soul is dying. And there's so many people that look successful, but they're dead on the inside. Their souls are dying. There's such a thing as soul death. There are many other cultures. Even, you know, it's not only unique to Christians. The uh, Native American culture talks about soul death. It's also in Asian culture, the idea of soul death. So we have to understand that there's a real possibility that you can be walking around on this earth and become a soulless person. I've seen people who have so much money, they, they pursue money, they pursue achievement. There are people that people are envying. People that, oh my God, I wish I knew that person. I've been around some of those people. I've been some, around people who have true success, holistic success, what I call soulful success. They're soulful. They have success, but they're soulful. And I've been around people who have success, but they're soulless, unhappy. They could be the most beautiful place in the world, still can't find any joy, never can find peace, never can rest, always on the hustle, always. So I hope that this next few weeks, I think we have two weeks to the end of the year. I hope you will take some time and be grateful and uh, enjoy your life. Laugh, love, be happy. As for me, I'm done. This was my last hurrah. Like this today was our big like content. Put it out there so we're ready for next year. I'm going to take off my lashes. Maybe for the rest of this year it's possible. Or maybe if I wear lashes, it'll be for joy, right? But... It's entirely possible I could go through the rest of the year without any makeup on. I'm just telling you, in case you run into me somewhere on the street, you'll just see my beautiful glowing skin. That's about it. Because I am about to relax. I'm going to be a professional relaxer this next two weeks. And you know that meme that says, any little money I have, now enjoyment. I'm going to enjoy myself. I am grateful for what God has done in my life this year. I'm grateful for how far he has brought us. I am grateful for every success. You know, for many of you, you may not be where you want to be, but you're so much further than where you were. If you look back, take a look back at where you came from, huh, you will start to dance. You will start to say, God, you're a good God. So I pray that you are able to dance. I pray you're able to laugh. I pray you're able to enjoy yourself. I am going to stop my enjoyment right now. I'm going to go downstairs, have a glass of wine, remove all of the, you know, when you see me like this, I'm just going to be relaxing. I'll take off the lashes one after the other, and I'm just going to put my feet up and let the enjoyment begin because goodness gracious, you have worked hard. You have worked hard. It is okay to spend some time with your family. It is okay to exhale. It is okay to restore yourself. And let me warn you, if you do not take time to rest, to restore yourself, when January comes, doesn't matter how big and fancy your goals are, doesn't matter how many things you go to, you will not have the energy to create. You will not have the energy to design. You will not have the energy to manifest all the possibilities of your life. So 
I hope that you will relax, release, relate. I am I'm, I'm going to send another message out for Christmas, but just in case I don't see you before then or before Christmas, in case you don't catch the message, Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy. I hope you chop life. <laughs> and maybe even if I don't see you before the new year, Happy New Year. Remember, you have worked hard. You deserve a break. God bless you. Be well.